Welcome to the Lily Meadows channel. Today's message is going to blow the wind of God over your life like a fresh breeze of hope and life and well-being for your soul and your spirit man because our God is a consuming fire. He lights our hearts on fire. If you're watching me, you're looking for him, right? The Lord Jesus Christ. I am too. Amen. So Lord, we're nothing without you. Thank you. We offer up our day, our moment right now. And everything I have to say, God, I offer it to you that you would use it for your glory in the hearts of those listening and also in eternity and for the chronicles of the reality of the time we live in, that you would be glorified. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. There are certain times when I am very made very aware how powerless I am to do anything, how much I don't have. In the face of bringing the word of God, I come here with nothing. I really do. So we're going to trust in the Lord. You and I both, as you listen. Amen. So also as you listen, you're not listening for information as much as revelation. They're very different. Information comes dates and times and circumstances of things that happened we can get a lot of information out of the Bible, and that's good. But there's revelation when you, like this morning, I was listening to the night that Jesus was tortured. Like, they literally were making fun of him and hitting him and saying, prophesy to us, who hit you? And they were um, hurting him and being nasty, the devil. And the revelation of that just struck me. That's why we're okay. Because he went through our suffering and he took our penalty. Amen. Now that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So let's pray. God, who are you? Come in this message. Come to us now listening. Whenever they're listening, come to me. Come to the declaration that you're making from heaven. And I testify that I know nothing except Christ and him crucified. And that's all I know. But I do know that that is the power of God unto my salvation and those listening. The only way to get to God, the creator, your creator, is through Jesus Christ. It's the only way to come home. How do we get there? Through his blood. Remember Passover. They had to put the blood of the lamb. Amen. And some people didn't want to do that. Their kids were sad. They got to hold the lamb and play with the lamb. They didn't want to have to kill the lamb. Some families may not have done it. Well, if they didn't have the blood on their doors because of human reasoning or mercy for things that are human, the angel of death came to their house. They weren't excused from the plagues. We can't use our earthly mind, and it ain't no religion. It's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only possible way to be saved is to come through that door by acknowledging your sin. Even if you already have done that, I'm talking about like a deep calls to deep. God, I'm disgusting. Save me with your blood. Not like this. God... Thank you that I do not sin as bad as them. Thank you. Ooh, look at, oh, those people are bad, God. We don't, ooh. Good thing I'm not like them. Good thing I'm your, I'm your perfect child. No, that never cuts it. Never. It's more like, oh, dear God. I am a wretch. Save me. And then he comes in with the power. To save. And we are literally taken from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. 
and are become a glorious new creation. That can only be done through receiving the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son, the Son of God. And he is exceptionally skilled at fixing hearts. Do you have a broken heart? You're the one to see, oh God, like the James Taylor scene, see, um, song, Handyman. Listen to it. It's Jesus. I mean, it. you can think of it like Jesus singing it. Handyman by James Taylor. I think it'll bless you. Lord, you are our handyman. Heal us. Make us better. Lord, our hearts are hurting. Would you please make us whole in Jesus' name? Lord, everyone listening, amen. Now we're making an announcement to the planet. Are we ready? This is um from God's heart to the planet. Amen. And I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it blesses you. Isaiah 40, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her. That her warfare is ended. Blessed are you who are watching. That's not spoken in pride and arrogance. It's spoken in the understanding that God is saying that to you. God Almighty is saying that to you, which is a big deal if you're listening. Not many are, and I know that only those who can hear listen to these messages on this channel. And not many do, um, and it's all in God's hand. But you're listening, and this is what he's saying to you. I'm not some lady, but you're God. Amen? Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. That's you, the city of God. Amen. And cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. Thank you, Lord. And that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. That's your voice too. Amen. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. We live in the desert, do we not? Yeah. In 2022, right now it's April 5th, 2022. And yes, we live in the desert. Spiritually. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Thank you, Lord. See, he's talking about your life, blessed of God. There have been some places in your life where it's rough. Whether you want to hide or be seen, whether you want this or that, Whatever we find, we find roughness within it sometimes. And God is saying, the uneven ground shall become level. Day by day, he's going to make it level. That's great news for a hiker. Amen. A hiker in this life, a pilgrim um, through this life. Amen. Uneven ground shall be made level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Amen. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what should I cry? <laughs> Amen. All flesh is grass, and its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. So this message coming to you in the year 2022 is on a format of a video file. Right now, it's going onto my camera. I'm going to put it on YouTube, and that's where you're watching from. And it will exist on that 
on this planet for as long as this world endures. But because it's the word of God like Isaiah, it stands forever. So eternally, God has testimony. The same thing is true of your works as you hear the Lord and he says to you, cry. And you say, Lord, what shall I cry? It's not my message. What should I cry? Tell me what to cry. Well, obviously the Lord God told Isaiah what to say. And he's honored as we read it today. A voice says, cry. What shall I cry? All flesh is grass. So we recognize the reality that there's a spiritual realm, that the kingdom of God is at hand, within reach. That's what he meant. At hand, at all times. There are always angels in your room. There's angels in your room right now. But you're not perceiving them fully because you are out of alignment, just like I am. Well, over time, we become aligned and we recognize our life in this world is like grass. And so we don't sow everything we have into this life in this world. But we appreciate God settling us in this world with a home and food. We appreciate and give great, grateful heart for God, to God, for protecting us in this realm, in our life, because we have a body and a family that we have to um, be safe and warm and fed. Amen. Now, but that's not our focus, because that my desk here, I don't know, this may get transferred to eternity. I like it so much. Maybe it's in my mansion. But most things, like my coffee cup right here, this will not be transferred into probably not eternal. I don't know what's metal, but in 60 billion years, metal is probably just does deteriorate. You know what I'm saying? Right? Where will it be? Well, it's if you look at it from God's perspective, everything, he sees everything from eternity. So what won't exist forever is temporary. And that's why Hebrews tells us to focus on what is eternal and not what is right in front of you. Well, then what is eternal? God, his kingdom. We're brought from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You know, guys, that you are where you are spiritually. I'm not surprising you, whoever you are watching. If you feel sad and you're being oppressed spiritually by a sickness or a, or a horrible situation like I have many times in my life, and you're crying out to God, you need help. A spiritual condition is a reality. You can't get out of it by yourself. You need Jesus Christ. But the reality is, I promise, like reality, is that his hand right now is reaching to you in the waters. And he's saying, I'm coming. I literally will grab you, beloved, and I will take you home with me. Now, that's a spiritual reality, and it is real, and it will happen, and it transfers into your eternity so that your born-again state, as you receive Jesus as your Savior, you ask him to wash you with his blood. We come through the door. We take the prescription from the doctor. We come through the door. We are whole and right before God because of Jesus Christ and what he paid. We love you, Lord. I mean, and you'll never, never get old. The blood will never get old. The four living creatures will worship God for the blood for his for eternity because that's how we're there because of the blood. Because if God gave creation a free will, then he had to know some weren't going to choose him and then they're going to go their own way and cause a mess, right? Right. That's right, Lily. So... <laughs> He had to come up with a solution. So before the foundation of the world, our Lord was crucified. So he's got this. Our God has got this. We don't need to be afraid. Amen. In fact, get you up to the mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. That's you, blessed of God. Once you know, now you could share. Hey, guys, I got the prescription. Cool. How do I get totally made whole and become a new creation so that I can live in my eternal life now on this earth so that the temporary things are provided for you, 
but you're seeking first the kingdom of God, and they're added unto you. But your focus isn't on the things that will perish because that's boring and useless, and it will always end in emptiness. Because even if you get every new thing you want every single day, you'll never be satisfied with those things. I am not, I'm not surprising. So <clears throat> go tell other people how they can come into the kingdom of heaven, right? Isn't that the point? Right? Now we herald the good news. It's what I'm doing. It's what you're doing. Now, lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, the herald of good news. Lift it up. Fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Well, how are you going to say that unless he comes? Behold, the Lord God comes with might. Okay, I totally did not know what to say. He's so good. And his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him. Amen. Guys, can you hear that? His reward is with him. He comes. His reward is with him. Amen. And his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He's so good. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Thank you, Lord. I need that very much. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span and closed the dust of the earth in a measure and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills with a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult? And who made him understand? Who taught him the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? <laughs> He show, and showed him the way of the understanding and showed him the way of understanding. Behold, the nations are like a drop in the bucket and all accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Who are we talking about? Like wake up us humans. We're talking about our maker. What should we know about him? Should We should know about him, blessed of God. We should know. Who are you, God? And I'm not going to like, la, 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 pretend you're not real. That's dumb. I don't want to fall into the dust. I'm a dust ball. But see, the thing is, what do we need to know about him? He wants to take what was formless and void and make a new creation. He wants to take us, the dust ball, and create us into a great king and queen to rule and reign with him forever. When Jesus said, you'll sit on my throne with me to those who overcome he said to the last day church the church in laodicea to those who overcome i will grant you to sit with me on my throne as i overcame and sat with my father on his throne he doesn't just mean until the earth is finished until the new heavens and the new earth are rolled out and the old are passed away he means forever maybe he'll make a whole new planet maybe he'll make a whole new universe and he'll need helpers right? We are being created into something we have no concept of. Even John in 1 John, he knew that. We are children of God, but we don't yet know what that is in our mind. So what we do is we focus on the things that are eternal and we become what we're supposed to be. And we actually leave the elementary things of this world and the elementary teachings of Christ where we're going beyond into the unknown, we're leaving religion behind. Ugh. Who wants that? Amen. We're talking about Almighty God who spans heaven, is recreating you through his son, Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes upon you now. If you want that, just say Holy Spirit. We Because free will, that's the key. The enemy is not like that. The enemy's religions and the enemy's ways of solving problems are forceful and mandate. God is not like that. There will come judgment, and what he decides will happen. He has the ultimate authority, but he does not create situations where people are mandated to do something. There is always a free choice, and he likes it. So when we give him praise, we do it because we mean it. I mean, if my husband had to be nice to me because it was a mandate, he had to be nice to me, or I would you know, or he would be in trouble. Like, no, no, that's not love. 
Love is a free will. Oh, gee, which I do right now. I love you and those watching. We love you, Jesus Christ. We lift your name on high and we give you all the glory for being who you are. Make us into what we are and be glorified because it's far above our knowledge. Lord, your ways are above our ways, your thoughts above our thoughts. But we comply with you and we know you'll do wonderful things and we give you our will that you may have your way on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Jesus, because you said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Because you said those hard words and you sweat your blood. We can say, oh, Father, not my will, but thine be done. And we can mean it. And we don't have to go through that because you already did. And we receive the blood of Jesus on our lives deeper and deeper to the core to the core of your spirit, man. And the Holy Spirit comes in like a flood if you let him. And open your spirit, man. And he comes in like a flood because you willfully choose God. And then he creates you into the image of himself, which is the original design. He knew all along. Those people who don't think he's anything and don't give him credence will become dust. And if they don't choose him to the end, they will go to hell and they will be apart from him forever in eternal suffering. That is reality. So however much people think I will fight against God, they will never win ever. Ultimately, God is God. And the only people in heaven are the people who freely chose him. <laughs> right? Amen. We don't want anybody in our lives that is forced to be there. That's not right. Amen. The book of Enoch chapter 83, and I will close. Thank you, Jesus. I lift up my hands in righteousness and blessed the holy and the great one. Let's do that by our will. Amen. Lord, we lift up our hands in righteousness and we bless your holy name, the Great One. I spoke with the breath of my mouth and with the tongue of the flesh which God has formed for all the sons of mortal men. Thank you, God, that I can worship you with my mouth and talk to you and converse with you. I love you, God. That with it they may speak, giving them breath, a mouth, and a tongue to converse with. I love you. I love you. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the King, great and powerful in thy greatness, Lord of all the creatures of heaven, King of kings, God of the whole world. Amen. Right? He's right there. He's right with you. He's behind me. He's in front of me. God, almighty God. See, how are we going to know him unless he comes? He said, behold, the Lord God comes with might in this message, and this is a testimony of that the reality that he is coming. Amen. And I believe he's going to visit the earth with his goodness. Have you met Jesus? Has he not been good to you? Testify, please. Has the Lord Jesus Christ not been good to you? He's going to visit the earth with goodness. He is goodness. Amen. Now, there is justice and there is judgment in those that are the flesh of the grass. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel. That's a huge forest. Now, he is huge and he is jealous and he is powerful. And we do, our, we do well to bow before him willingly and ask him for mercy. Trust me. You're going to be doing it at some point. Whether you do it now or wait till you die, I suggest doing it now so you can honor your king with your life. So in eternity, he can say you did something good. You did something valuable. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise him. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the king and great and powerful. Sorry. Blessed art thou, O Lord, the king. Amen. Great and powerful in thy greatness, Lord of all the creatures of heaven, King of kings, God of the whole world, whose reign, whose kingdom, and whose majesty endure forever and ever. 
From generation to generation shall thy dominion exist. Yes. All the heavens are thy throne forever, and all the earth thy footstool forever and ever. This is the book of Enoch, the seventh from Adam, basically saying what it says in so many places in Scripture. Amen. It's the word of the Lord. For thou hast made them, and over all thou reignest. Yes, the Lord. No act whatsoever exceeds thy power, with thee wisdom is unchangeable. Nor from thy throne and from thy presence is it ever averted. Wisdom always dwells with God. And if we are in right standing with him, wisdom dwells with us. I promise you, you can't get a better thing than that, than being wise I mean, that's what Solomon asked for, and it blessed him. His life was blessed by having wisdom. Thank you. Lord, may we have wisdom. Remember, he said, if you ask, I will give liberally. So we do ask that we may have wisdom, God. For thou hast made them over all thou reignest. No acts whatsoever exceeds thy power, which with thee wisdom is unchangeable. Nor from thy throne and from thy presence is it ever averted. Oh, amen, right? Thou knowest all things, seest and hearest them, nor is anything concealed from thee, for thou perceivest all things. The angels of thy heavens have transgressed, and on mortal flesh shall thy wrath remain until the day of the great judgment. Now then, O God, Lord and mighty King, I entreat thee and beseech thee to grant my prayer that a posterity, a posterity may be left to me on earth. And that the whole human race may not perish. There have been a faithful people throughout history from the beginning, from Abel, Enoch, all the way, and Seth in, in between many, all the way to us. I entreat thee and beseech thee to grant my prayer that, the, that a posterity may be left to me on earth and that the whole human race may not perish that the earth may not be left destitute and destruction take place forever. O oh, my Lord, let the race perish from the earth, from off the earth which has offended thee, but a righteous and upright race establish for a posterity forever. Hide not thy face, O oh Lord, from the prayer of thy servant. That was Enoch 83. <laughs> The Lord did not hide his face from the prayer of Enoch. And I'm going to close now. He did not hide his face from the prayer of Enoch. He has a posterity in Daniel from the Bible, in Joseph, in Enoch, um, Job, everybody who wrote the Bible and who's mentioned in it. And obviously many, many, many who are not, who were not in the, happened to make the Bible and that were not. Obviously, when after the Bible is finished being written, we're still doing things. Amen. So what we are going to do is thank God that Enoch did have a posterity and that they do worship God and that the whole earth is not given to destruction because of us. And as we pray and intercede, our God is hearing us and he's making forth a glorious new creation with his Holy Spirit. Lord, these are the days of Elijah, the dry bones becoming his flesh. Your Holy Spirit is moving across the land to bring repentance, wholeness, just a clarity of mind to understand Jesus Christ, our salvation. The reality of who you are and that all flesh is grass and that we ought not give too much attention and heart to it. But we should give you, God, all the glory and all the love and all the, the desire that we have. We give it to God. We seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added unto us. Remember this. Jesus said the kingdom is like when a man finds a very valuable pearl or a very valuable some treasure in the dirt. He goes home and sells everything that he has. He buys that land. And I'm telling you, for those of us who bought that land, it is good for us. Amen. In that parable, Jesus told, when we sell every, like we give up everything that we have, it's added unto us. Remember, 
I mean, it is. God does bless us. Amen. So I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ that you will be glorified, God, by how you move. You said you would come. You do not just talk. You're here with me. And I know that you will touch everyone who will listen, that you will make them whole in their body, their mind, and their spirit, and their soul as they turn to you with all of their being, and I do too. And we ask you for mercy, and we ask you that you would speak tenderly to us. In the name of Jesus, speak tenderly to those listening and bless them. Make your face to shine upon them and give you, give them your peace. And heal their bodies and their families and all those they're praying for. Even the gift of healing be with them that are whole before you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we lift up your holy name because you're the only one who can do this. In Jesus' name, he has touched you because he is God and he testifies of himself, which we love in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.